to the chase, evidence-based. Pull up a chair, let's get this straight. Peptide Buddy, he's your peptide buddy. Hey everybody, so my job here isn't to shill and it isn't to promote, and so I'm going to bluntly give you a PSA based off some interesting updates in the peptide space I've heard about lately, most recently on Huberman Lab with Dr. Craig Conover. Listen, I'm all about talking peptide research, learning risks and benefits, actually sitting down and going through the literature, but when it comes to blindly promoting a product purely for financial incentive 100%, I feel it's my duty to provide an update on such a topic to my tiny audience of peptide education hobbyists like me. So since the ambiguous ban on peptide compounding took place in the fall of 2023, human optimization clinics that sell peptides, which don't get me wrong, quite possibly help others, find themselves in a bit of a bind. Because now that they are unaware of the legal implications of continuing to sell peptides, they are starting to make and promote products similar to the original unregulated by the FDA so that they can call it new BPC-157 and make some bread off of it. I see it kind of like smoke shops selling Delta-8 THC instead of Delta-9 THC in states without access to recreational marijuana but with even less research. Here, I'll show you a clip from the podcast so we can go over it. So there's a new compound, newer uh, peptide called, uh, the short for PDA, pentadeca-arginate. It's basically the same molecular structure as BPC, except they've swapped out an acetate for arginate. One amino acid Correct. substitution. One mm -hmm. amino acid substitution. Um, and so we're using that and having really good results. Uh, I surmise that this is going how it's going to be with all of these peptides. Okay. So PDA, pentadeca arginate, is apparently, according to Dr. Conover, and I quote, it's basically the same molecular structure as BPC, except they've swapped out an acetate for an arginate. Let's make this clear. BPC-157 is 15 amino acids. As we've said a million times on this channel, it's a pentadeca peptide derived from human gastric acid. And now acetate, that's not an amino acid. It's a chemical structural group. So we're replacing an acetate, which is not an amino acid, with an arginate. Creates a 16 amino acid peptide, imagining he didn't misspeak. And when the FDA's concern about PPC-157 is lack of research in humans, in addition to a concern for poor compounding and presence of impure ingredients, the optimization sector's instinct is to create a new compound with a different amount of amino acids, whose structure you cannot find online, and whose efficacy is not at all founded in research, solely promoted by clinics selling it purely for financial purposes. So it's not unlikely that Dr. Conover misspoke and meant to say that perhaps a different amino acid was replaced with an arginine, even so, you cannot even confirm the chemical structure of PDA online, because all that pops up are companies trying to sell it. And stating that an amino acid substitution doesn't change anything is likely, in my opinion, BS, perhaps? Amino acid substitutions can change a lot, from receptor binding to pharmacokinetics. For instance, look at the Cavinson bioregulator peptides. Cardiogen and epitalon are very tiny tetrapeptides with one amino acid difference, and the sole purpose of their research and clinical investigation varies greatly. Or better yet, take a look at the different GHRH receptor agonists like sermoralin, tesamoralin, CJC1295. Their structures are very similar. However, the context in which they've been looked at and proposed most effective clinical utilities all differ as well. This idea demonstrates the importance of precise modifications in peptide design and highlights how seemingly minor changes can lead to significant variations in efficacy and totally different realms of research. All I'm saying is that using a large platform to hype up these seemingly small but possibly drastic alterations of a peptide that has already limited research and tiny investigations into long-term risk, whose risks are still being evaluated at that for no reason other than financial incentive disguised as bringing peptides to the masses is a bit disappointing. But maybe that's just me. I figured you all deserve to hear about this because you'll be hearing about it soon enough and possibly from a source with more financial incentive. Oh yeah, so speaking of financial incentive, if you do want to help my teeny tiny small peptide education YouTube channel, please do hit that like and subscribe button. But most importantly, I hope you have a great day. Take care. Cut to the chase, evidence-based. Pull up a chair, let's get this straight. Peptide buddy, he's your peptide buddy.